these cells are arranged um, is dependent on the pattern of division and how they're going to stay attached. Now, looking here, you can see the cocci cells. Um, they can be arranged in singles where there's just one of them. Here is an example of diplococci where they are paired and streptococci, where they're in chains. Um, they can be divided along two perpendicular planes. These are tetrads, where they're in packets of four, and these are sarcina, where they look like cubes. They're arranged in cubes, anywhere from eight to 64 cells. Also, they can be uh, arranged in grape-like clusters um, that you see here, and they can be different shapes. Staphylococci and micrococci are shown here. Now, we classify prokaryotes by looking at their microscopic morphology and their macroscopic morphology, how their colonies look. Uh, we look at the bacterial physiology, and then we look at serog serological analysis, looking at their serums and their fluids. And then, of course, there's genetic and molecular analysis included in that. Um, Berge's Manual of Determinative Bacteriology is a five-volume resource that covers all the prokaryotes that we know about. And so um, it's phylogenetic. The classification is based on genetic information, and it has archaea domain and bacteria domain. And there are five major subgroups in 25 different phyla. In the domain archaea, again, they're primitive, and they are found in extreme environments, and they have different types of nutrition, modes of nutrition. Your domain bacteria, we've got the phylum proteobacteria with your gram-negative cell walls, and then you've got the phylum fermi firmicutes that are gram-positive mainly, and actinobacteria is the other phylum that's gram-positive. This is the universal phylogenetic tree. And you can see over here in blue, that's your eukarya. Here's your archaea in red. And then you also have some uh, protozoa that are included in that there. But your archaea are red. Protozoa are not included, ignore that statement. And then over here in the green, that's all your bacteria that you have. Um, as far as diagnosing for medicinal use or medical use, we're going to look at the cell wall structure, the shape, the arrangement, and the physiological traits, and um, if they've been known to cause bacterial diseases as well. Round bacterial cells growing in regular clusters should be described as in clusters. They're round, so they must be cocci, and if they are in clusters, it's staphylococci. Now, archaea, the other ones, um, they're more related to eukarya than bacteria. That's why I even said that there's some protists included in that because they are so related. Um, they have unique membrane lipids and cell walls, and they have a unique genetic sequence in their R ribosomal RNA. But this is a comparison of the three looking at the cell type, of course, bacteria and archaea are your prokaryotes, to the chromosomes. They can be singular or single, may have a few, um, but they're always circular. The ribosomes are going to be 
uh, smaller than what you see over here in eukarya. Uh, the ribosomal RNA sequences are all unique in all of them. The RNA sequences that they share with eukarya, bacteria shares one, archaea shares three. Um, peptidoglycan in the cell wall, bacteria has that huge amount, archaea has none. And of course eukarya has none as well. These are the ones that we find living in extreme habitats, the extremophiles. They can handle excess heat, salt, very acidic pH, high pressure, and the atmosphere, high and low. They can produce methane. They are hyperthermophiles, extreme hot environments, extreme halophiles. Those are the ones that can survive in the salt, and then we have those that can survive in sulfur as well. Organisms in the domain archaea have peptidoglycan in their cell wall. True or false? This was the very last slide we did long ago.